Hey all, this is Lance. I'm working on a solution to uh, the first challenge for breaking loops with break in the break continue pass lesson. Um, I'm given a doc string here. It says complete the find prime function according to its doc string. Uh, and remember to take care of edge cases. That is one and two when we're dealing with prime numbers. Um, right? The doc string says that we're going to find all prime numbers within a list and return uh, the ones that are prime in another list. As an input parameter, we just have a list. And uh, as I mentioned, as the doc string mentioned, we're just going to return a list of all of the primes that are found in list one. So to get started, the first thing that I'm gonna need to do is actually declare a list to collect my prime numbers and I'm gonna call that list of primes. After I've done that, my next step is to go ahead and iterate through all of the numbers in my list, and then I can proceed uh, checking if each one of them is prime or not. Um, the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna to wanna to set a Boolean flag, and I'm gonna call this prime and set it to true. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take care of some of my edge cases. So um, I'm actually gonna come up here and change this I to num, just so it's a little bit more descriptive about what we're actually iterating through, right? Each of these are numbers. Um, if my number is one, then I'm gonna go ahead and switch that Boolean flag uh, prime in this case to false because uh, prime, uh, one is not a prime number, right? And then I'm going to do another if statement. This time I'm going to say if num is two, then um, prime is going to remain true. Maybe a little redundant. I probably don't need to put the prime uh, true here, but it's certainly not going to do uh, any damage by doing so. Um, I'm also going to change that second if statement to an elif statement. So it only gets checked if the number is not a one. And then right now we're stuck with um, our last situation, right? Our last case. And that is if the number is not one or one or two, we actually have to iterate through and check for some divisors uh, to see if we can find some divisors of this problem. Uh, our divisors of this number and determine that it is not prime. And we'll do that within the, the else, uh, in the else statement of this if elif else um, block of code, right? And as I mentioned, what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm trying to find a divisor um, and that divisor is going to be in, uh, in between the range of two and for the time being, I'm just going to use the number itself. Um, we could certainly actually use the uh, an integer representation of the number square root if we were looking to optimize this function, right? Because the largest possible divisor is going to be uh, its square root and um, we only need to check integers that are equal to or lesser than uh, that square root to see if they're possible divisors, right? But as I mentioned, if you wanna keep it simple and uh, clean, we can just go ahead and check all the way up until the number itself. Um, and then we're going to say if our number is evenly divisible by our divisor, right? And that's if uh, modulo division gives us zero, that is there is no rem remainder when we do modulo division, right? If it's evenly divisible, then it does actually have a, uh, a divisor and is therefore not prime. So once we've determined that this is not prime, I can set my Boolean flag to false. And then this is what the lesson is all about. And it's the use of the break statement. In this case, I'm gonna use the break statement. I've found a divisor. I know the number's not prime. It's not necessary for me to continue the for loop checking for any additional divisors. So I can use the break statement here and break that for loop and we can go ahead and move on to the next step of our algorithm. Um, in that case, 
I'm going to go ahead and skip a line. We've got a different logical block. Um, I'm going to say if my Boolean makes it through all of those checks and it's still true, uh, I'm going to go ahead and append uh, the number, which I've determined is indeed prime, to my list of primes, right? Um, here I've explicitly said if prime is true, right? If we're trying to keep this as Pythonic as possible, I can simply say if prime, right? And implicitly it's saying if prime is true, then um, we're going to be uh, appending the item to the list, right? And once I've done that, I need to come all the way back out to um, my base. And what I'm gonna say is um, if the length, right? I have this little clause in here in my doc string. It says if no primes are found, return a string, no prime found. Um, sort of unusual to turn to return a list in one case and a string in another, right? More traditionally, you might just see an empty list returned, um, but that's what it's looking for here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, mind that. And to check whether or not I have actually found any primes, I'm just gonna check the length of my list, right? If I have gone through list one, checked all the numbers, there aren't any primes, then I can go ahead and determine that the list length, list of primes would be zero, right? And there were no prime found. So here I can put my return statement, no prime found. And uh, it is looking for a very specific string. So just make sure that you have the punctuation, capitalization, those things uh, taken care of appropriately. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do um, if that's not the case, I am simply going to return my list of primes. And I've got some, some red, take care of my empty spaces. And now it looks like if I were to copy and paste this code into uh, learn, I actually have a learn window here. And I have already I have already uh, copy and pasted this code in here. And when I run my test, I can see the result that I get is correct. It does indeed return the list of primes uh, if there are primes and the string no prime found uh, if there are not any. So that's the solution. Appreciate your time, thanks.